tech watch with the emergence of NFTs and the metaverse, tech enthusiasts are now gearing up for what could be the next phase of the Internet. A new article on CBSNews.com explains the new buzzword Web3 and breaks down what the upcoming online era could look like. CBSN tech reporter Dan Patterson wrote that article and joins us now. Dan, thanks for being with us. I know people are going to read your article, of course, but break it down for us. What is Web3? Can you explain it simply? Yeah, so Web3 is tech's hottest buzzword, uh, but it's kind of mysterious. It's used by evangelists uh, to invoke the next phase of the Internet. Uh, but what it really is is just kind of a rebrand or a repackage of tech you've probably heard a lot about already, including blockchain, cryptocurrency, DAOs, and NFTs. Now, all of these things at one point or another were very hyped. They were supposed to revolutionize all sorts of things like commerce and transactions and and they are still promised to do those things. They're just not as sexy as they once were. So Web3 is uh, kind of an umbrella phrase that includes all of these things, including augmented and virtual reality by some because the metaverse will be accessed by AR and VR. And uh, enthusiasts see a world that is populated, a virtual world that is populated by NFTs and uh, digital assets uh, that can be bought and sold from each other directly. Uh, instead of maybe having MasterCard in the middle or Venmo, uh, you would buy and sell an avatar uh, from uh, a creator directly. It's important to remember, though, all of these technologies that build Web3 are, in fact, real, but the metaverse isn't. It's still science fiction. Yeah, Dan, you know, you say it encapsulates so many different technologies. Uh, how do we know that this isn't just a hype word? This isn't just a buzzword. Is there something real here? It's just a hype word. It's just a buzzword. But the technology is real. Uh, I spoke with a number of technology experts, uh, including uh, people who work with B2B, business to business tech. And a lot of them said, yeah, uh, the blockchain is actually really useful. It's maybe not going to revolutionize the entire world, but it's helpful. For example, uh, I spoke with a company called Chroma Signet, and they track cannabis, coffee, uh, produce, and other things using the blockchain. Uh, this isn't new. Big companies like IBM, Cisco, and others use the blockchain for very similar uh, methods. It's great for authenticating things, but it has has problems too. It's slow. There are fees associated with blockchain and cryptocurrency. So it's not perfect, uh, but it, it is an interesting system that has, at least to this point, been used not for these buzzy hype uh, revolutionary purposes, but instead uh, to make business a little more efficient. So Dan, it affects a lot of the back end of the internet, the, the, the plumbing that people don't see, but will Web3 impact the way that everyone uses the web? Will it be any different to go to social media, for instance, or YouTube, or even send an old-fashioned email, maybe? Uh, no, Web3 isn't really for uh, the current uses of the Internet. We have protocols, uh, but what's very interesting is maybe to apply something like uh, the, the technology that powers email, which is open protocols. We can send email from, say, uh, Gmail to Hotmail or to Apple Mail, and those all work uh, interoperably. Uh, the reason is because we have standards, and those standards allow different services to talk to each other. Now, you can apply that to what evangelists say about Web3 and the metaverse. They would like to see kind of the same thing. Instead of email, maybe different worlds that are virtual. So Second Life could maybe talk to Facebook's Horizon Worlds. This is all hypothetical, though. Once again, the metaverse is still science fiction. It could happen. The technology building blocks are there, but it's going to take a long time for that fiction to become reality. Yeah, that's interesting, Dan, because a lot of people opened up VR headsets over the weekend. Maybe they got an Oculus set and they're putting it on for the first time. It feels like it's it's right around the corner, but but you say it's it's not. Well, products are here now. And in fact, get ready. We are covering CES, uh, the Consumer Electronics Show, virtually, remotely next week. CBS News will cover all kinds of technologies, including virtual reality and augmented reality headsets. But if you want a preview, you can just search virtual reality on cbsnews.com and find a review that we did very recently of some uh, headsets that you can buy and use right now. Uh, virtual reality is real. Look, blockchain technology 
technology is real. It's just not combined into this uh, world where we have NFTs and VR and we can hop from platform to platform. Uh, look, VR is cool. I have an Oculus sitting right next to me. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun. But it's not the metaverse. It's not Web3. This stuff is cool. It's interesting. It's still science fiction. Fair enough. And, you know, I do want to ask you one more thing about Web3, because some tech giants out there like Jack Dorsey and Elon Musk have mocked this term, Web3, on Twitter. Uh, do you think people should take what they're saying with a grain of salt? Or is this really something that will be part of all of our lives down the line? Yeah, first of all, uh, whatever Elon Musk or Jack Dorsey are tweeting, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it's not that they are unserious people. Uh, Elon Musk is the world's richest man. Jack Dorsey ran a very successful social media company. But these are people who do have ulterior motives. Uh, and sometimes those motives are just to troll and be funny. Uh, other times, particularly with Elon Musk, he likes to kind of toss a grenade and then see who comes out. He likes to test the arguments, see if there's good uh, opposing viewpoints. Uh, Jack Dorsey, on the other hand, has some personal and business acts to grind with uh, venture capital firms like Andreessen Horowitz or Chris Dixon. Uh, that doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean that either one party is right or wrong. Dorsey is making an interesting point, though, and that's that uh, all of these Web3 evangelists uh, still rely, or at least the, the companies that are building Web3 still rely on centralized capital. They rely on venture capital, and they all still plan to IPO in real dollars that can be spent right now. They don't plan to IPO in Bitcoin. Dan, thank you for being with us. We know that you have a lot more in your article. And if you want to read Dan's article, you can do so by heading over to cbsnews.com. It's posted there. Just search for the headline right there explaining Web3. Dan breaks it all down for you.